Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia or Liv. My channel is Long Live the Stitcher. And I am here talking about cross stitch and all of my wonderful stitchy hobbies. So if you've seen my first video, you'll notice this video coming in hot on the tails of that first one. Um, I figured while I was all set up with my lights and my cameras and the, there's a microphone, I've got the whole shebang. My husband is a videographer, so he has been kind enough to set me up with his professional gear to make making a video that much easier. So hopefully it looks as good as I think his stuff looks. Um, but I decided let's roll into the second video while I've got everything set up and show you my haul that I got from uh, my local LNS today. So I don't have a lot of purchasing that I normally do for cross stitch. I normally buy what I'm going to use for project and then I use it. And I've only been stitching for um, about three years now. So I don't have a lot of things that I've accumulated, but in the past year I've gotten a lot more into stitching and a lot more into cross stitch and having the things. And so when you purchase for a project, you know, things stay in your stash from finishing a project. So I'm starting to accumulate some new things. And then, you know, it's because it's my new, probably favorite hobby. Don't tell my music that it's probably my favorite hobby right now. Um, so when I have time and funds to purchase something for a hobby, it tends to be stitchy stuff now. So I just wanted to share with you some of the new things I bought. I was on vacation and I have often fly with something that I stitch with and other Americans know or people flying through American airports know about TSA and security and I have had a lot of trouble with educating TSA agents on what their own standards are for scissors. So I've had scissors confiscated, I've had things pulled aside and now I'm being questioned about the scissors that I have that are within their guidelines but still they see it come through, there's blades on this thing, they're being extra cautious and it causes just a lot of problems for myself. So I started using nail clippers, just like bringing along a set of nail clippers to just clip the floss that I had. It's not the cleanest clip, like it just, sometimes the ends will get kind of frayed, but it works, it's good enough for the time being, um, but I lost my clippers on a plane and on the plane to my vacation destination. And so while I was there, I needed to get something. There was a LNS in the town that I was in. And so I told my husband, clamp down, we're going in the cross stitch store cause I'm gonna have to just see what they have, what I want. And what they had was the cutest little scissors. So this is my first fancy pair of scissors that I have for cross stitch. Um, but I just thought that they're absolutely lovely um, within TSA guidelines, which is a blade of no more than three inches. Look it up before you stitch, but that's, so I've got my cute little stitchy scissors. TSA did not take them from me, so I was able to take them on the plane, and now they sit and live in my stitch chair. So that's my new scissor haul. I also went and purchased a bunch of new needle minders, and I absolutely love having a needle minder that is cute, that's funny, maybe a little sassy, sitting there on my work. So I haven't even taken them out. This is how new they are. But I love frogs. And this frog, this frog is very inappropriate. This frog has an attitude, and I love it. I love this frog's attitude. I also got, oh, let's see, this one. It says Clever Girl off of Jurassic Park, and I absolutely love that. Because um, aren't girls clever? We can think of our clever girls that maybe or maybe not are dangerous, like velociraptors. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and then this was just adorable. Look at that cat. My cat's enjoying her coffee. I absolutely loved it. It was too cute. So I had to have it. So these will be on some of my new projects as I get them going, as I kit some things up. So that was my new haul that I got. Um, I ordered the needle minders off of an Etsy store. That was awesome. I'll have to link it in the show notes because it was really cool. I need to remember all these things I say I'm linking in the show notes so that I actually like follow through. If there's something I've forgotten and I've talked about in the show notes, please leave a comment and say, hey Liv, you said you were gonna do this. I'd love that link. Please remind me, I don't mind at all. Um, so. I went to my local LNS here in Dallas. The one that I really enjoy going to is called Creative Stitches and Crafts. 
they are so wonderful and helpful there. So helpful to the point that every time I've gone, I walk out with a scrap piece of paper that one of them has either drawn a diagram or written down something that's instructive to help me figure out something new in my cross-stitch project. So helpful beyond all get out. Um, oh, but I forgot. I told you guys I was going to share with you a craft beer that I'm enjoying today while I am recording. And today, the brew that I have is from Texas. This is an Alstad. It's a brewery in the hill country near Fredericksburg. This is the Kolsch. It's a very summery German brew, which is good. It is hot as hell here in Texas right now. So it's really good. Alstad's a brewery that uh, my husband and I went on a little like weekend getaway to Fredericksburg one year. Like a lot of people in this area do. The hill country is a great place to escape the heat. Um, and we were down there and happened upon this brewery that was new at the time. Fell in love. Really good brew. Ended up coming home with like a car full <laughs> of their beers. Um, and then a few years later, they started distributing across the state. And so now I can walk into my local, um, my local beer store and get an Alstad. So that's what I'm drinking today. Mm, and it is delicious. So... But my haul, back to the stitchy things. So I got everything in a bag and I'm just gonna pull it out of the bag bit by bit. First things first, I bought some tulip needles. I saw Samantha, um, the Hoogie Stitcher, I think I'm saying that right, um, but her channel is one of my favorite cross stitch channels right now. And she said that she absolutely loved these needles, that they worked really well. Plus, they're just so beautifully packaged that she had to have some. Um, so I decided to, I've, uh, I've decided to follow in her footsteps and try these out. I've had a couple of different kinds of needles. I've used the needles that came in those kits that I originally started with. Um, I've used some DMC needles, but I had a lot of problems with the DMC needles, particularly just the floss getting shredded in the eye of the needle, not being smooth enough there. And so then your work ends up looking a little frayed. It's not as crisp as I wanted it to look. So I started looking for solutions to that and I've tried some Bowen needles. Those are pretty good. Um, not as nice as I would like. They still cause a lot of wear and tear on the floss. And especially for my long-term projects, when you're pulling floss on and off of your needle pretty a lot, and as you do for my, um, my Scarlet Quince that has a lot of blended threads, it has a lot of confetti stitches. So I'm constantly changing my floss through my needle. And every time I pull it through, if that needle eye is wearing on the floss, I really think that starts to show in the floss integrity in the piece itself. So. I am constantly on the hunt for, I hope not constantly, maybe you guys have a suggestion. What should I be using? What needle is going to be the kindest to my floss? That's what I want. A needle eye that will be gentle on my floss. Um, so hopefully, maybe Tulip is the answer, but I tried these out. This is the Tapestry Needle. It's an assortment built for cross stitch, so I'm having fun trying that. Gonna try that out soon. Maybe today, I'll get into it. We shall see. Um, in my last whip parade, I showed you all the bookmarks that I'm making for my coworkers, but I haven't figured out just yet how I'm going to finish them. So right now, most of them are finished as far as the stitching goes, but they're not fully finished objects yet because they're not in bookmark form. They're just there on the Ada. And it was suggested to me by one of the wonderful women at Creative Stitches to use uh, what's called Ultra Suede. And that essentially ultra suede doesn't fray. So you can, this is what I was told, you can cut it to fit the actual bookmark and then use a hem stitch to connect the ultra suede to the Ada and it won't fray. It'll be just good to go like that. Um, so I got some black. Black I think will work well with a couple of the different, at least two that I'm thinking of, of my cross stitch bookmarks. But we shall see. So I got it to try that out. Um, I like that idea. If it works, then what I'm going to do is go back. They had all different colors, like all different colors. So I'll take my work with it and go pick out the color that works well. Because I kind of like the suede idea. Like it seems like that would work well on a bookmark page. That was my idea at least. Um, I also uh, got some clips to deal with all of the extra fabric 
that I have with like my big linen piece and then also with the new sal that I'm going to show you this time. My stitch that I'm going to kit up right here for you. So that is good. I like the clips. Um, I also got a, this is the most boring thing that I purchased, but I got a ring. Ta-da! I got a ring because I have evolved so much in the way that I keep my floss. So when I first started stitching, everything was just kind of loose. However it came to me in the kit was how I worked with it. Um, and then the type A in me found that that organization was not cutting it. And I moved to bobbins. And I actually spent almost an entire afternoon bobbinating my floss for my big Scarlet Quince pattern. Um, there's like uh, over 100 colors in that, I would say. I might be exaggerating. It feels like over 100 colors. There's a lot. Um, it's probably closer to 50. Anyway, and so when I pull threads for that, it's all off of bobbins. And then I just started realizing how much time I was spending putting floss on bobbins, unwinding floss from bobbins, cutting off how much I wanted, putting the rest of the floss back on the bobbin, then putting the bobbin back in the bobbin container. Um, so I stopped using bobbins. As aesthetically pleasing as they are to go in their little compartments, it, I just couldn't anymore. So I have moved over to the floss away bag. And so I got a ring to put my new project on all of its floss away bags. So I've just started to put my new skeins in their bags and I will be using my new ring to uh, organize them all for my new project. Then I purchased just um, two cross stitch magazines. I am an absolute sucker for these. They have so many beautiful patterns in them. Um, so I saw these in the store and just went, oh, I've got to try. So it gives you kind of like a, a gallery in the back of all the patterns that are in each of the magazines. Um, and I love hydrangeas, this top one here, if you can see. I carried hydrangeas in my bouquet when I was married and I love, 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 love hydrangeas. So I saw that and went, oh, just have to have it. And then I started looking through it and I saw so many other things I really like, like this window scene is just beautiful. Um, some of these other color motifs. Oh, I didn't even see this too, this cardinal. Isn't that cardinal cute? That would be such a good Christmas ornament gift. I think that's how they have it set up, isn't it? Oh, yep. Oh, four calling birds. Oh, like the song. I love it. Yeah, so I saw that and went, oh, well, I'll just have to have this. Oh, and then the other thing I saw was they had in this magazine a stitch along with these houses. So I got two magazines partially because of the house stitch along. They're so beautiful. Just really pretty. Um, so magazine one, magazine two. And you can see, let's see, what drew me into this magazine was this beautiful, I don't even know what it is, but they are beautiful flower and I just love those colors. Um, and that really, I think, is what does it for me on cross stitch, is the colors, the color palettes, the way color creatively combines and works with the fabric to just pop even more. I think that might be my favorite thing about cross stitch. So what about you guys? Do you get into color creation like I do? Uh, the other thing I liked about this was um, the house, the stitch along that they have, the multi patterned one. They have more of that in there. I just really like those. So one of the floss tubers that I really enjoy actually is another Olivia. It's Olivia B out of, I think she's in San Francisco area. She's one of the first people I started watching. Absolutely love her channel, love her vibe and her energy. She's just got such kindness in her. Um, and she has a thing for houses. So I've really enjoyed watching all of her houses that she picks out of like Quaker based patterns and samplers that have cute houses in them. And so I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm going to do my Olivia B. I'm Olivia C do my houses. So it'll be an homage. So that was just the random stuff I got. And then the rest of it was to get ready for my stitch along. So I am participating in my very first stitch along and I'm so excited. Um, I'm doing it with Samantha, Samantha the Higgy Stitcher, H-Y-G-G-E Stitcher. And she is hosting the stitch along. There are so many people already on the Instagram who are commenting on her channel about how excited they are. 
and I am all in. I'm all in not only because the pattern, which I'm about to show you, is just lovely. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, but also because it's such an act of community. It is such a communal activity to be creating the same thing at the same time and alongside other people doing the same thing who are enjoying it, who are finding the happiness, the joy in the simplicity in the small things, in the enrichment of our own lives, and then sharing it together. Um, so that's what we're doing. So the pattern is, it's the uh, hashtag live in the summer sal, and the pattern is Summer Quaker by Leela Studio. So this is the pattern. Um, when I saw Samantha talk about it, I was excited that she was hosting one. She's excited. Um, and then she put the pattern up there and I went, oh, I must, I must. I absolutely love these colors, the blues and the navy and the coral, just oh, gorgeous. Um, and I also really love the motifs. So I love the ocean. I love New England. Um, even though I'm in, down here in Texas, I absolutely love that part of the country. And to me, it evokes so much of the things that I love about places like Maine and Boston and other parts of Massachusetts. And so I said, oh, well, I am going to do the Live in the Summer Sal. So I went to my LNS to get everything I need. And I'm going to show you how I kit things up now. So when I go to kit up a project, first things first, you have to pick your fabric. I shared with you guys that I just started stitching on linen really recently. And I went into the, my store not knowing what I wanted to do. So on the pattern, it says that it's stitched originally on linen and that you can use a linen, but it's also suitable to be stitched on Ada. I have the most experience stitching on Ada. And so there's a simplicity with using Ada that makes, um, I don't know, it feels comfortable. I sometimes still get nervous about stitching on linen. I say sometimes this morning today, when I went to the store, I was nervous about stitching this pattern on linen. But I was there, I was looking at fabrics with the wonderful women who were having fun pulling things out and helping me decide. And I just went, you know what? We do these things not because they're easy, but because they are hard. Let's do something that's a challenge. And I am stitching this pattern on linen and it will be beautiful. So this is the linen that I got. It is uh, Belfast. I think this is a Weingart. If I'm saying that right, people might say Weingart maybe. Um, but that is the fabric maker. The color is uh, flax. Or maybe this is a Belfast. I should have been paying more attention. Anyway, it is 32 count linen. And I just think this color, here I'll show better. I think this color is really lovely. I think it evokes so much of that kind of old New England, sandy beaches, beautiful summer scene that the pattern is. Um, and then I got all of the DMC that I needed. So I looked in my stash to see if I had the DMC um, and I had just a handful of colors. So I went ahead and I put those in my floss away bags and then went off to the store to get everything else that I needed. And I will show you, I got all but one color. They're gonna call me when the color comes in, but let me show you my color bouquet. Here it is. These are all the colors that are going to be in the Live in the Summer Sal. I just, aren't these so beautiful with these corals and the blues and these greens? I just absolutely am gaga over this. And the gold, I think gold and navy and coral have to be some of my all-time favorite color combinations. Do you find yourself gravitating to the same color themes like that? just like you have to use your favorite colors. So these are the colors. I think they're gonna look so beautiful against this. See if you can see, maybe you can see. I hope you can see, cause it's beautiful. That is what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna be gorgeous, just gorgeous. So I think for the rest of the day, getting ready for the stitch along, I'm going to finish putting all of my new floss in the floss away bags. 
and then I will put on my brand spanking new ring. Um, and then put into my kit bag. So I recently started putting all of my cross stitch projects in kind of uniform zippered bags so that they're easy to when I'm sitting in my stitch chair to just go and pull one out and know that it had all the floss already inside of it. It already has the fabric either in a hoop or the hoop there ready to be easily put on um, with the fabric just in the pattern, everything I need so that I wasn't scrounging around looking for things. My stitch chair next to it, I have a little container that has things like my scissors. It has things um, like needles that I need, um, but it doesn't have all those other things. So now all of my project bags have the fabric, all the floss that I need. They have the pattern. They have a needle minder that's already attached to the floss. They have a needle that's dedicated to that. So I'm good to go. That has been a game changer as far as being able to quickly pick something up and get to work. I no longer am having to run around and grab my supplies. My supplies are in one place. And the one place that I got is uh, just these zippered pouches. This was the easiest thing in the world. So I ordered these off of Amazon. They are come in all different colors and I got them, I think you can get them all plain, but I like the colored ones. Um, and they're so cheap. I got the biggest ones that they had. I think it was like $15. It was not much at all, but they're all zippered up and it'll be really easy to kit up all my stuff. I can put all of my floss and the cute little floss away bags and my fabric and go right in here and put it in my whip bin that I have next to my stitchy chair. I'm gonna have to record one time and show you my stitchy chair and how I have things set up there. Um, it won't be as pretty. It's kind of a mess in my little stitch corner. The only thing I don't know yet is how I'm gonna have the fabric. So it's a big piece of fabric. The fabric is much larger than my actual project will be. I think the actual project will be something along the lines of with room for framing on the ends. I think 20 inches by 15 inches. So spatial reasoning is not my strong suit. It's gonna be rather large but not as large as this is fully unfolded. So what I will probably do is lay it out, carefully measure it out, and then cut off some of the excess and hold on to it as um, scraps to do small projects on. Because I, I do small projects. We'll hold on to it, we'll save it, it'll be used. And then I'll bust out my beautiful sewing machine and then I will just do a really simple zigzag stitch along the edge here so that it does not fray. That is, as I have found, the best thing to do. I did that on my, pretty sure I did that. Yes, I did that on my last linen, a new start that I have, my Quaker pattern. And it went really well. It's nice knowing that I can work on it for as long as it takes. I can handle the fabric as much as I need and know that it's not gonna just fray away. I had some problems with that with some of my first Ada projects where you start and you think you've got a decent enough margin. I probably gave myself two inches, but then over the course of the months that I was working on it, I lost like half an inch due to all of the fraying and pulling apart of the Ada and not thinking about it, just going, oh, this is coming unraveled. Let me pull it off. Um, and then losing all of that extra working space that you need for framing. So, so that was my haul. That's what I got. I am so excited to start the uh, Stitch Along, the Live in the Sunshine Stitch Along with Samantha and all of the other wonderful people. I'm gonna be getting started that on, started with that on August 1st. I am holding off. I will be patient and wait until August 1st, but I have, frankly, a lot of other stitching I need to do beforehand. I have those bookmark projects that I'm finishing for my coworkers as well as the full, what will be framed cotton flower that I'm doing for my boss that is nowhere near done. I may have gotten myself in over my head, but that's all right. We'll be fine. We stitch because it's stressful, right? No, no, no. I stitch because it's relaxing, because this brings me peace in times, especially when I feel like I don't have a lot of peace, when my mind is too busy. That's why I stitch, but it'll be fun. Hopefully my, the people I'm creating things for will enjoy it. If they don't enjoy it, maybe they'll think of me every time they look at the thing they don't like. <laughs> we'll see. But I'm enjoying making it and that's half the fun, right? Um, let me see, was there anything else I wanted to tell you guys about? No, I 
think that's it. I think I've run the gamut. Um, so this is my second video. I'm planning on creating a video every two weeks. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works out that way. I feel like I have a lot I want to share right now and show you. Like, I want to show you guys my big project, my um, Lady in the Unicorn Tapestry. Um, I want to show you how I work on that. I want to show you my stitchy chair and maybe even show you a little bit of my stitching. I can show you my crazy method that I use for my uh, big project, which is a combination. I'll spoil it for you. It's a combination of both cross country and parking. It is a hot mess that really works for me. <laughs> so maybe it would really work for you too. I learned first um, how to do both parking, how to do cross country by watching other floss tubers. So maybe my crazy method will help inspire you to make your own crazy method. And isn't that what this is all about? So that's enough for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and following along. I hope you comment, let me know what you like. If you'd like to see something more, um, follow me on Instagram to see it. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye.